Peace, love, shalom, everybody. I trust and hope that everybody is having a great week and weekend. And um, I hope that your Sunday is even more blessed, even the more. Um, tonight as I'm winding down and preparing for praise and worship for the next day, you know, I just, uh, I'm just reflecting, you know, in essence tonight in this testimony and in this encouragement, I want to interlock the two and to just really try my best to just be as raw and upfront as I possibly can to tell you how good God really is. Um, I'm trying to find the words to express, um, you know, for someone like me, you know, that have grown up the way that I did. I mean, I've been in the church my whole life. I had my little time where I backslid like anybody else. And God has called me back into the church just recently. Uh, not calling from the backsliding, backsliding point of view, but more so I fell off because of dealing with some church issues in the past. And, you know, God just recently called me back to ministry. I'll say maybe the last three years. And I can honestly say that these have been the best three years I've ever experienced personally with God himself. Um, he's really been proving himself to me. You know, I've grown up in poverty. I've seen a lot of lack. I've seen a lot of people around me lack. So to live in the luxury of God and really be able to experience how beautiful it is to be a child of God. You know, I feel like all we talk about in the church today, not in all churches, but in essence, we talk about struggle and, and suffering, and it's very much needed to talk about. But I also feel like we neglect the aspect of God where we reap the blessings. You know, you reap the benefit of being a child of God, you know, and one of those benefits that I want to talk about tonight is favor. And I want to talk about how his favor surpasses any dollar. You know, I was talking to my brother-in-law about that tonight. And, you know, even he would talk, he was talking about how you don't need a lot of money. You need favor. And I've spoken to my mom about this on several occasions. And I have experienced it head on for myself. I've had two cars so far. And both of those cars were above the first car I got. I got it without even having a job. <laughs> That's favor. Um. Uh, the second car I got was also without money down. That's favor. And, you know, for my first car, I shouldn't have had it. And even now, the car I have, I shouldn't have it. And I'm not up here boasting and bragging, and bragging about cars, but I'm showing you how money wasn't, in essence, important to get what I needed from God. I didn't need a car to just have 48-inch uh, rims and ride around the block and to show off, but I needed it to get to work. You know, I needed it to help others, and God provided that. You know, I waited for a very long time to just get my first car, and it, 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 it felt like an eternity, but God was getting me prepared for it. You know, if I was to get a car at the time I was looking to get one, I probably wouldn't be here today, all the crazy driving I've done in my life. And... um but I just want to talk about this one situation and topic that it just blows my mind how the Lord speaks to me in dreams and how he speaks to me and actually literally direct. God literally does direct your path. If you really want him to do it, he will do it. If you really humble yourself and open yourself up to him, he will do it. I don't know who you are. I don't know who this is for tonight. But I truly just wanted to encourage you and to let me be an example of what happens when you actually humble yourself. Get out of God's way and let him lead you. So um, I had a hard time finding a job, had limited education at one point in my life. This had to be almost about 10 years ago. And, you know, I had, you know, the little jobs like anybody else would have, you know, growing up as a teenager. You know how you get your little summer jobs or whatever. So on, so on, so on. And I went through a point of my life where I couldn't find a job and I was years without employment. You know, I was picked on, laughed at because I didn't have employment. It was made to like I was being lazy, but they didn't understand. They didn't know that I was walking the streets all time of the day with, in all kinds of weather, heat waves, freezing cold, looking for jobs. And everywhere I went, they're telling me, no, you're getting dressed up for interviews. And I get there and the, the interview goes well from what I can see. I get there and they tell me no again. <coughs> Excuse me. They tell me I'm going to call you back. 
no phone call, nothing. And it was just beginning to get discouraged and to the point that I considered suicide. I couldn't get out. People was taking advantage of me and my family because we didn't have the funds. We didn't have the money. And, and you know, people had their foot on our neck, you know, saying whatever they wanted to say, treating us any old kind of way because we didn't have any money and because we were trying our best and it seemed like no doors would open. And I truly, I, I can recall in these darkest times, the enemy coming and tempting me to sell my soul to him so that I can take care of my family or so that I can help provide or be a help in some sort of way. You know, that Satan came in all kinds of ways. I don't even want to display every way that he's came to me on this camera, but I can truly tell you that the devil is very real and he's nothing to play with. And, and, and you know, the, the, the people at the time that, you know, you would tell someone to go to, those people are hurting you as well. So you can't really get the full encouragement that you need or the full nourishment. Thank God for, at the time, thank God for my mother's verbal uh, uh, encouragement. And, you know, there were times that my dad, he would encourage me, you know, don't give up, don't give up, don't give up. And I wouldn't see any other way. You know, I, I, when I tell you, I know what it's like to struggle. And there's literally like you're in a dark space and it's like as if there's no way out. I know what that feels like. I couldn't even see a light at the end of the tunnel. And it's like, you know, you know, just thinking back on those days, it was, it was trying some, very trying some, but I thank God because it's made me who I am today, you know? So all of a sudden my father comes up and this is a very personal story, but you know, I'm only maybe like 18, 19 years old, maybe, maybe 20, but I think about 18, 19 years old, my father comes up telling me, hey, you know, he's been working in the medical field his whole life, pretty much his whole life, and um, a good portion of it, excuse me, and um, he came to me and said, hey, you want a job transporting the elderly and, you know, taking them back and forth from dialysis to doctor's appointments and discharges from the hospital. I didn't understand all that language. Then at the time, all I heard was job and drive. And I knew that I loved to drive. So I thought it was going to be easy. I get in there and I spent about two months in there and I didn't last, you know, uh, things I wasn't trained properly. And it just kind of like threw me in and rushed me in. And, and I just, you know, was out there by myself they told me they would allow my dad to, uh, well, they told my dad that they would allow him to train me and they never did do so. So I wasn't trained properly at the time of the job. Things started going haywire, going wrong, and things began to get dangerous because of the lack of training. So at that point, I just used common sense and I resigned. And then I'll say another five years, I went another five trying years without no employment, no, I mean, nothing. And it was a struggle just to find a meal every day. And um, just imagine being unemployed like that for five years again is like, oh, God, please never again. But again, it made me who I am today. It created the perseverance and the true trust in God. And throughout that time, I went through so much um, mentally, physically and spiritually. And then again, suicide became an option to me. Um, <clears throat> something deep down inside would just never let me take that road or fully go into it and and. I just thank God that he didn't allow it because I would never trade what I'm in now, where I'm living now, who I'm marrying now, the life I'm living now, seeing my family's progression the way I see now, seeing the new addition, my nephew and the family. If I had killed myself, I wouldn't even be here to experience this beauty. And so it's five years, no employment. So then, you know, God blesses me with a car. So I said, okay, I'm going to do some Uber, you know, try to get get on my feet, you know, and then I'll go and pursue further education and further employment. So I go and do Uber and um, I'm doing Uber and, you know, <laughs> had some good days. I had some bad days and it was becoming trying even with that because doing Uber with people and with their food orders, I was doing delivery and I was doing the taxi service side of things. So it was, uh, sorry, I just got to. Oh, I'm sorry, I was just reading a message. Um, so I was doing, excuse me, doing the taxi side of it and then doing the delivery side of it. Then it was trying, you know, um, in dangerous areas and X, Y, Z, B, Y, N, F. 
So I said, okay, you know, now I'm beginning to pray and ask God for direction. You know, no, I have a girlfriend at the time that is now my fiance. I'll be marrying her in 10 days. And I'm very excited. But um, at the time, she was um, my fiance. Well, I'm sorry, my girlfriend at the time. She wasn't my fiance yet. And then we begin to date so that now, you know, I have someone, you know, we both have a Christian background. She's a Christian. I'm a Christian. And, you know, Christian women, if there's a true woman of God, she's looking for you to lead her and say, God deliberately put me in a place of leadership so that I would seek him. I truly believe that so that the calling of my life could be fully fulfilled. So as that was going on, you know, I'm now I'm seeking him. So I hear God tell me. Go to this particular company, get your certification. So I go, I get my certification, and I get a vision of a coffee mug with that particular. It's a, this is weird, but it had a, it was a coffee mug, and it had the logo of the company, and it flashed past. So in my spirit, I automatically knew that meant passing by, not to stay. So okay, I'm like okay, so I quit. I get the certifications that I can get, and then I quit. I said okay. So then all of a sudden, the company that my father first bought me to, you know, I, I thought about it. But what's so strange is that before this happened, I had an Uber trip and I wrote everything down and documented. And I'm going to say as much of it as I can, as much as I, I can remember. But I had an Uber trip. Never forget this day. And just to fast forward, I had a spiritual experience literally while I was awake. And, and I really heard the voice of God speak to me from the inside. It wasn't even from the outside, it's from the inside. And he literally gave me direction. I'm telling you, y'all, he will, if you really want God to direct you, humble yourself, get out of the way. If you don't get nothing out of what I'm saying, if you don't get nothing out of what I'm saying tonight, get this. If you're really seeking him for an answer, get out of the way, get out of his way. And get still before him. And he will talk to you. So he gave me direction. I broke down crying. And he wanted me to go back to healthcare. So I fill out the application. I go back. The same place hires me again. I go back. I stay about a year. And then you know. At first things was rough man. It was it was rough. You know The way they were doing. And the way the dispatchers were treating me. And I was dealing with a lot. You know. But. I waited out a year, and then all of a sudden, somebody came to me, and they offered me a spot on their team, on their medical team. So I'm thinking at the time, hey, you know, I'm going through, I'm going through hell. So, so this is my way out. You know, this, this is God. You know, and you know, there was a part of me that was like, mm. but then there was like another part that was like, nah, I don't want to hear it. I'm out. You know, I want to do what I want to do. So I leave. I go. I hook up with these guys. <laughs> and I mean, not even three weeks in, it was a mess. You know, I get a dream of myself turning around and walking back to the old job. But I'm like, ah, that's just a dream. And I have another dream that I have the uniform on with no badges. I'm like, ah, that's just a dream. And I noticing that as I'm ignoring these dreams, things are getting worse and worse and worse. I'm carrying 200 and something piece, 200 and something pound people up and down the stairs in wheelchairs. You know, you get a two man assist. Sometimes I would bring people up a few stairs by myself. Or uh, if they wasn't that heavy, I'll take them up by myself. And there's others that were like, I mean, heavy, 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 heavy. And it had to take, you know, me and another guy, you know, another crew member would help me. But the whole point is that I'm destroying my back while doing this. And is that some days I was doing it almost like two and three, four times a week. And it's just like, no, this is not going to work. And um, so, you know, I had nowhere else to go. I'm crying out to God. There's no answer, right? I'm not getting any answer from him. And um, it's like the more I cried out, the worse things would get. You know, I would feel him empowering me. And I would feel him strengthening me. But it just seemed as if I, I just was stuck. I felt trapped. And um, it was almost like when Elijah ran from Jezebel and ran into the cave. I, I feel like because my Jezebel at the time was at that place, I ran away. I had a little open door and I ran away. But in the cave, in my time, God was still blessing me. He was still taking care of me. I was getting tips at first. Everything was okay, although it was hard, you know. Um, 
there were people that was that loved my service and and it, I was ministering to people passing out bible tracts I mean it was going on pretty okay in the midst of chaos and it just got to a certain point where I just knew that there was something better I know that God puts us sometimes or leads us into trying times or challenging times but I know in my heart that he wouldn't lead me somewhere where I'm going to get hurt I mean, and it just felt it was getting dangerous, started transporting dangerous neighborhoods, and I mean, it, it was getting chaotic. And then I finally got an answer. So I went on a little fast, and, and I was, you know, I sacrificed something, and I, you know, something that I love, you know, it was a food, a particular food, and I sacrificed it, I fasted, and then sure enough, shortly after, God spoke to me in a dream. So I saw the company again. This is now the third time around. And I'm going to tell you how this has gone. The third time around, no corporation is going to hire you if you keep leaving them. That doesn't happen. So I get a dream. I follow the dream in real life. I woke up and followed the instructions from the dream that God had used somebody to tell me. I saw some images and pictures in the dream, and God verified that what he was saying to me in this dream. So I followed the instructions. I physically emailed the particular supervisor, and this supervisor is tough. She's very, 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 very tough. I never dreamed in a million years that she would hire me back, ever, because she's tough. She's, she's tough love. She's like the mother. She's like my, she's like the mother of the medical field to me. And, you know, after I left that second time, she seemed like she was done with me. That, that's, that's it. So I'm, like, confused. Like, Lord, how am I going to approach these people after I've left them twice? on my own without your instructions, you know, and I had to believe what he said the first time. I had to believe in my heart that this is what the Lord says. And I had to follow it no matter what it looked like. No, no, no. I couldn't lean to my own understanding. And, um, I didn't. And, uh, I went and I, uh, emailed her. I believe the same day she responded to me later on that day. I was relaxing. I was relaxing with some family members, and I got an email saying, "Please give me a call." So right now, my heart's like, "Whoa!" You know, because like my almost like my heart dropped. Like, hold up, you <laughs> answering that fast when normally, yeah, I couldn't even get you to answer me within the same week before. So I knew that this was God, and I knew that God was speaking. So I went and I gave her a phone call. Told me to fill out an application. Couldn't believe it. And we discussed a little bit of things there, and that was that, right? So now, here we go. While I'm working at the place I'm at now, you know, the particular boss is, is he's, he's being facetious, cutting my hours, trying to get me to quit, I guess because I wouldn't work in a certain department that he wants me to work in. Um, he started being facetious and start, uh, you know, cutting my hours. You know, remind you, I got rent to pay now and, you know, preparing to get married and X, Y, Z, B, Y, and F. And now it's getting trying now. You know, I'm getting nervous because, you know, and I start panicking because I go one day and they see, you know, my hours are cut. I don't have no days. I did cut my days, not putting the schedule up. And I'm like, yo, this is not the time to be playing. And the other place that told me to file an application, they weren't hiring fast enough. And, um. Time went on, almost about almost a week and a half, maybe two weeks. I heard nothing from her, and I sent another email just letting them know that, you know, I filled out the application, and I didn't hear nothing, and, then, you know, I just got discouraged. I said, you know what? Screw this. I'm going to go to FedEx. I'm going to go to Amazon. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll do whatever I have to do. I'm not going to sit here and just wait. Here I am getting frustrated, knowing that God spoke to me specifically. And this was my problem, that vagabond spirit. A lot of us, we got to get rid of that vagabond spirit. You know, a vagabond is someone who is jobless and, and, and homeless and that jumps from place to place with no foundation. That is what a vagabond is. So, you know, sometimes in life, you know, we tend to leave the plans of God. You know, we're, we're founded on something that God has placed us, but because of our own plans in our lives and our own frustration, sometimes we adopt the vagabond spirit to live in our lives. And that's what God was letting me know, you know, you, that you, it can't happen. If you're going to follow me, you know, you, you have to be obedient if you want to reap what obedience gives you.
And obedience is definitely better than sacrifice. It says it in the word of God. So um, I get frustrated. I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to FedEx. I'm going to Amazon. I, I'll do what I have to do. You know, blah, 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 blah. And I go and I'm trying to fill out the application the night before. The, the thing just keeps rejecting me and rejecting me and rejecting me. I'm like, so I just get frustrated. And I'm going to bed, frustrated. Go to bed. And then I see the company's logo in the van. In a dream. Again. And it disappears. I wake up and I felt God say, believe what I told you the first time. And no matter what it looked like. This is me talking now. No matter what it looked like, you have to believe what God said the first time. God has made us so many promises in his word. And in his word, I'll tell you one of the things that he said, and I'm telling you, I've experienced it for myself. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And I will never leave you nor forsake you. And I can honestly say that that scripture has been made real in my life. And that's what Joshua had to believe in the Old Testament when he was put in a position of leadership. I bet you he was afraid, you know, he had been following Moses and now it was his turn. And just like God said, just as I was with Moses, I'll be with you. And although Joshua went through some things with the Israelites, he had to believe what God said the first time. Although Moses went through what he went through, he had to Go back to the promise. He had to hold on to the word of God. No matter what the Israelites, all the complaining, all the murmuring, Moses believed what God told him the first time. And that is how we have to be in this walk. God has promised you a lot of things. and God has told you to go certain places. God has told you to get involved with certain things. And he has told you not to get involved with certain things. He has told you to go here or go there. But things got a little bit off course because you might have not truly believed what he said the first time. So the encouragement that I give you tonight is to believe what he said the first time. You, some of you might have to go back to what God told you the first time. Because sometimes we have a tendency to go off course because of our own plans and our own wants and what we want out of life. But we have to understand that when you give your life to God, you no longer belong to you anymore. And that God is the head of your life. Okay? So, again, I got discouraged. Things was going wrong. Nothing was making sense. I felt like God wasn't answering me. I felt like he left me. And I was just going through hell every single day on that job. I can't even tell you how many days I contemplated just the thought of just maybe I can kill myself. But I thought, I mean, the suicide, this is how bad it was. This is how bad it was getting. The devil started oppressing me spiritually and nobody knew anything. Only maybe my mom and maybe my fiance. But, but I wasn't really talking to many people. I was still leading praise and worship every single Sunday. God would move through me mightily. People would get blessed, delivered, set free. But then I'm going back home broken. I'm going back home lost, you know, and, and, and I had to, I, I heard this message that the bishop preached, Bishop Baysmore preached this message. And he said, a lot of the times like David, we have no problem slaying anybody else giant, but we have a problem slaying our own giant. So it wasn't until I got up the grace of God within me, or God uh, gave me the strength, I'm sorry, built up the strength in me to go after my own giant. And when I went after my own giant with the power of God, this is what got me where I am now. Excuse me. So, excuse me, I'm a little bit, uh, my, my allergies are kicking me, but um, I, I honestly say, so the second time, just to get back on topic, um, I was gonna go to FedEx and I just, no, I, 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 I just couldn't take it no more. I went to sleep, saw the van and the logo that I was supposed to be going for, the medical van that I, was, that I was supposed to drive. And I saw it again and I woke up and I felt God tell me, believe what I told you the first time. So then sure enough, I stayed on course, got a phone call, set up an interview. The, the interview went perfect. And so far the whole process has been perfect and now I'm being hired. And on May 18th, between May 18th and June 2nd, I'll be starting this job again. 
making twice as much more money in the same position, plus hazard pay because of COVID-19. So I say all that to say this. Don't be a spiritual vagabond and believe what God says the first time. And what I mean by that is don't let the stumbling blocks of Satan himself get you to walk off the course of God. Because when you walk away from God, you become spiritually homeless. When you walk away from God's calling on your life, you become spiritually jobless, which makes you a spiritual vagabond. So my encouragement to you tonight, if you don't listen to anything else I said, believe what God said to you the first time. And I know a lot of you have gotten instructions from God. And as soon as you got those instructions, you went forth to do what it, whatever it was that God told you to do. But it just seemed like things wasn't making sense. So you went off to something else. Go back to that. That first thing that you know in your heart that God told you to do. Believe what he said the first time. So I pray that tonight that this would bless you or bless someone out there. And I'm going to close out in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for allowing me. God, I thank you for allowing me to come to come forth, Lord God, to speak to your people and to bless them and to encourage them, Lord God. Whoever is in need of this word, Lord God, let them be a receiver of it, Lord God. Touch their heart that they will be soft to you, Lord God, and humble to you so that they can move out of the way to let you speak to them, Lord God. Whoever needs to hear your voice, let them hear. For the Bible says, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Lord God, I pray that you would rejuvenate their spirit and I pray that you would fire them up, Lord God, and get them excited about your will again, Lord God. For those that may have walked off the course, Lord God, or may have walked off the foundational home that you've given them spiritually, or may have walked off their spirit, walked away from their spiritual calling, Lord God, I pray that your spirit will go out, take them by the hand, and lead them back to where they're supposed to be in you. In the mighty name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ, I pray that this message, Lord God, would penetrate the souls of people, not just so that they can hear and say it was a good word, it was powerful, but God, so that they can take it, Lord God, and live by the word that you have given unto them. In the name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. I love you all. Be blessed. God is with you. And believe what he said the first time. And the promise I want to stand on tonight, is I believe, is in Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 5. I may be wrong. You can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. But he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Believe that promise. God is there. Peace, love, shalom. I'm out.